Right. Let's see if we can take our meditation a little bit further. So, the first aspect to try to develop a connection to is that sense of your mountain-like presence. While you do Qigong, while you stand, you stand like a mountain. Even though you may bring your awareness up into a more spacious, lighter, more insubstantial experience, you never want to lose your connection to this mountain-like structure, this physical body that you're in. When you sit, you sit like a mountain, but you don't do it like that. You sit effortlessly like a mountain. Can you get a sense of what I mean? Yes, very powerful. You just, there you are within, within yourself. And you need, wherever your meditation goes from there, it doesn't leave that behind, unless it does it deliberately. There may well be times that we might tune into something like the perception of emptiness in the space that we're in, and for a moment we lose it. But the first thing that arises within us when we, with, when we return is the sense of that mountain-like physical presence. That's your default setting, if you like. And if you develop that as your default setting, then these lower chakras will always be engaged, they'll always be with you, the energy will always, awareness will always be within these chakras, and that will stop you from this experience that you've been asking me about, of flying away. You lose your mountain-like presence, and you fly away. It's a beautiful day. And all your energy is like there, and your spirit's gone. When you look out on a beautiful day from within yourself, you meet it, but here. So you, you taste it, you smell it, you drink it, you see it, you feel it as a completely imbibed experience within you. Not... Do you understand? Can you get a sense of what I mean? So from that sense of mountain-like stability, the aspects of the mind we're looking at, heart, aspects of our heart, a stable heart, that is symbolized through our mountain-like presence. The next aspect we're looking for is a still heart, an undisturbed heart. Our heart, really our heart, not our heart chakra, but this delicate piece of software in your heart, which we call Hadaya Vatu. This Hadaya Vatu means the base of your mind, the base of your heart. It is the same word, heart and mind. And it's this subtle piece of software in your heart that supports the arising of your awareness in this body. It is the, this Hadayawatu, when it becomes defunct, marks the end of your life. It has nothing to do with your brain. Your brain performs myriad functions that make this physical life possible, and this capacity of thinking possible. But awareness itself arises in your heart. It is awareness that lands every experience that you have. Awareness is the mirror. In the mirror of your heart, every experience is reflected. How well it is reflected depends entirely on the composure of your heart. If your heart is shaking, vibrating, with worry, with agitation, with restlessness, with aversion, with craving, then it, that vibrating shakes every experience that comes your way. But if your heart is an ocean of serenity, then it reflects perfectly like a still pool of water, everything that appears within it. So the second aspect of our meditative attitude is a still, 
quiet heart. How do we come to that space? If it's already shaking, you leave everything as it is. You do nothing to anything. No thought that arises in you, it is merely witnessed. No feeling that arises in you, it is merely witnessed. You rest, you abide. This is what we mean when we talk about calm abiding. Abiding is to leave everything as it is, to just meet the experience as a witness. So your heart is undisturbed by what is going on. That analogy I gave of a sh shaken up pool of water, that is our heart. It is shaken up by the experiences that come our way. Like if this happens, that happens, I relax to this, I react with that. Well, we haven't learned to not react in the world at large yet. We learn to not react here in that quiet moment of meditation. And gradually we take that still heart to the world and meet the world with that composure. So, you sit like a mountain, resting effortlessly within yourself, allow yourself to come to stillness. What happens to water when it's left alone? It comes to stillness. What do you have to do to make water be still? Absolutely nothing. What do you have to do to bring your heart to stillness? Absolutely nothing. And where do you find the stillness? to attune your heart to. From here, from that mountain-like stable physical presence, attune yourself to the stillness of the space you're in. Behind the coming and going of things, the sounds that appear, it's an endless, uninterrupted stillness resting effortlessly within itself. That stillness is the same stillness as in, in your heart when you leave everything as it is. From that mountain-like physical presence, from your heart feel the stillness of the room. Let's try. Settle into your posture, relax deeply into it. Just let it be. Don't worry about the feeling, any tension, any pain, just leave it, it will sort itself out. Just get a sense of your mountain-like, stable, physical presence in the space that you occupy. Enjoy just sitting quietly with yourself. <coughs> Let the flesh relax around the bones. Let your heart soften, your mind soften. And tune in from your heart, just from within to the space around you and feel the stillness in the space around you. And drop effortlessly into that stillness without losing your physical presence. Rest effortlessly within yourself, completely awake, 
leave everything to resolve itself effortlessly. Let your heart become that stillness, the same stillness that is everywhere, behind the arising and passing of things. Let your heart become the mirror that reflects all things as they are. Sounds are merely impressions arising and passing in the mirror of awareness. Thought are merely impressions arising and passing within the mirror of awareness. But the mirror itself does not innately contain any of these things. It is innately empty, clear, sky-like, spacious undisturbed. Leave everything as it is. Rest effortlessly in the stillness of your heart.
Sukino wa kemino hontu sabe sata bawantu sukitat. May all beings be happy. Feel from your heart to your whole body <coughs> and into the space around you. May all beings be happy. Suki no ake Sabe sata bhavantu suki tata. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. Breathe in. And relax. Stretch yourself out in your own way. <coughs> Relax your body. Good way to relax your legs is to tap the backs of your knees on the floor. Tap your feet together. 
and hang forward and just rock out your shoulders and neck. <clears throat> All right. Our second attempt at meditation. How are we doing? Thumbs up, middle or down? <laughs> Good. Middle? Down. It is possible that you get off with a flyer first couple of times and then suddenly the mind starts smothering you and all of a sudden you're lost in thinking. Don't worry. The point is to recognize that there's a state of awareness that is beyond all of that thinking that is merely lost when we get lost in our thinking. It's like this, when you think, you lose awareness. What's going on when you're thinking? I'm lost in thought. Literally, I'm lost in thought. When I say, listen to that car outside, you're completely there. And there's no thinking, is there? The car, the aeroplane. In the hearing, there's only the heard, a complete moment. In all its simplicity, when you turn up for it. Awareness is what everything arises within. That aeroplane, arising within awareness. I'm aware of the plane. I'm aware of my thoughts then I lose awareness as I get lost in my thoughts. So leave everything as it is, leave the thoughts as they are. Don't chase them, you can't chase the aeroplane. It's just appearing in the mirror. You can't take it out of the mirror. When it's past, there's no trace of it. Let it pass without trace, let the thoughts pass without trace. Don't grip your experiences and try to drag them out of the moment that they were in into the moment that they're not. That's only going on in your mind. <coughs> what did you have for lunch? Where is it? It's an idea in your mind. How does your knee feel? How does your back feel? Ah. Huh. Just that. It's difficult to um, when you talk about the heart, I'm thinking about that mirror in the heart and the stillness to the heart. And to actually touch from you know, to just you know, go into this overwhelming relaxation state and just you don't need to be aware of the heart. <coughs> you leave the heart, it's, you just start to recognize awareness as such. Yes, okay, like, yes, but there are moments when, there it is, there's moments where we lost it. But it's recognizing that it didn't, wasn't not there when we didn't recognize it. Streaming in the background. The mirror is there. Now, okay, we don't want to get too technical here. After all, it is only like an introductory weekend. There is quite a lot of software at work in this experience. There's a lot, you know, there's the physical basis of the heart, there's the software in the heart, there's your brain, there's your eyes, there's all of this. It takes a while to put all those pieces together. Don't try. There's a direct transmission here in this meditation. And try to stay out of your ideas and just go straight into it. Yeah? It's in awareness that the experience lies. It doesn't lie in your mind. The, f the key is to see that awareness is one thing. 
Our mind, our active mind, is another thing. Awareness is a passive state that rests effortlessly within itself, merely witnesses and experiences that which is to be experienced. It doesn't identify, label, cling to, do anything to, or need to do anything to. Awareness really can meet as it is, what is, and leave it as it is. <coughs> but the mind, oh no, smothers the experience with its ideas. And see if you can just spot these two aspects. Developing this relationship to this, what we call this heart essence, this fundamental awakens, innate state of awakening within us. This is the journey. But the first point is to recognize that it's actually there. That's a milestone. When the only reference point we've had is this mind that's trying to understand what's going on all the time. There isn't anything to understand. So is the mind then completely still? No, awareness is still. So what's happening with the mind? Oh. Goodness me, you tell me. Eventually your mind will empty itself. So, we're going on to the third aspect. We're looking at these three aspects. The body, our relationship to the body, and, and how, what, you know, how that contributes to our awakened experience. The heart, what role that's playing. What is this heart that we keep talking about? And then we'll look at our mind. So tomorrow, we're looking at how we go from this active, grasping state of mind to this spacious, eventually empty state of mind. You're probably not experiencing your mind as empty yet. It's still got things going on, but behind it, that awareness is empty. It's like it's not, okay, it's not empty because the, the sound's appearing in it, the thoughts are appearing in it, but it's, it's kind of, it's, it, as it leaves things as it is, it's undisturbed. Let's leave it like that for now. Don't worry, it's a jigsaw. We haven't got all the pieces yet. We've got to, you know, but we're, we're getting them. We're gathering. We're starting to put together a deeper understanding of what's going on in this life so that we can meet it with more insight, love. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Yes. No. At this stage, not. So, if you look at, technically, when we're meditating, we tend to look at developing mindfulness and concentration and insight. These three different aspects, wisdom, concentration and mindfulness. So at the moment, we're not focusing specifically, we're trying to leave everything, if you're focusing on anything, it's the perception of stillness. So if you're concentrating on anything, you're concentrating on the percent, this perception of stillness that's coming into resonance within you, yes? <clears throat> Your mind can still move around, it's not concentrated, it's not one-pointed. Later, you can develop your concentration. Here, we're looking at developing the stillness in our mind, which is our equanimity. I'm not reacting to what's going on, so I'm not being disturbed by what's going on. I'm allowing my heart to come to stillness. You know, meditation is quite a big field. There's a lot. It's, you know, we're talking at the whole thing of meditation is the whole cultivation of every aspect of our mind and consciousness. But what I want to do here is to help you get a way into that fundamental state, which is already awake. Thereafter, we can do things like learn to train the active mind to concentrate and be still. We can learn to develop our way of paying attention with wise attention, etc. There's lots of other ways we can cultivate through meditation. But here it's about spotting and developing our relationship to that innate, already awake aspect of our mind. So let your mind just abide. Make no effort. Apart from 
the effort, I suppose, to not get entangled. Later we can learn to concentrate. You know, if you're sitting, paying attention to the mountain light, the sense of mountain light presence. That's it. But it's not the idea of it, it's the experience of it. You're not concentrating or paying attention to the idea of stillness, you're paying attention to the experience of stillness as it comes up within you and as you perceive it externally. Good, I think we're doing well. Do you think you're doing well? Pleased? Very good, huh? (laughs) All right. Yes, now you can have a break. Thank you. Unless there's any more questions. All right, go and stretch your legs. <laughs>